Prostitution, condoms, abortion, gay sex. Did you know the majority of U.S. church-going Catholics give money to support all of these evils through social justice initiatives at the National Bishops' Conference? You may have heard some of this before, but not like this. Despite all the denials by church leaders and accusations that the whistleblowers are disobedient, mean, and uncharitable, these are the facts that need to be addressed, not the people shining the light on them. If you want to learn how your collection plate money is used to promote all kinds of intrinsic evil, then stick around because the lid is about to get blown off the U.S. Bishop's Catholic Campaign for Human Development. It seems like some people, organizations, and governments are hell-bent on bringing down the Catholic Church. The question is, how do you expose opposition to the faith and to the truth? And while they say what you don't know can't hurt you, everybody needs to know about the hidden forces prowling around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Guess that's where we come in. Follow me. Hello and welcome to this latest edition of CIA, the Catholic Investigative Agency. I'm Michael Voris. Do you believe it's important to give some of your hard-earned money to charities? If you do, why do you give? Is it to share with others the abundance God has given you? Is it to help your brothers and sisters in need? Is it to benefit those less fortunate than you? Or is it to kill babies and give condoms to African youth? Wait, that's not what you had in mind, is it? Oh well, that's what the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops Charity Program, the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, also known as CCHD, does with some of the money that you've managed to scrape together to help people in need. Feeling a bit confused right now? Well, don't worry. We're going to learn how and why these evils are happening in this episode of CIA entitled Social Injustice how the CCHD has perverted the Catholic Church's social teaching into anti-Catholic activism. Now, we're going to expose the evil of the CCHD, but we're also going to look at why the CCHD's way of responding to social problems is also fundamentally flawed. You see, the CCHD is part of a bigger problem that's sucking at the lifeblood of the Catholic Church. In recent decades, the Church's teaching, specifically her social teaching, has been sullied and perverted until it is now a hardly recognizable mass of, at best, warm and fluffy, happy clappy platitudes, and at worst, a bunch of thinly veiled communist ideas. To give you a better idea of what we're going to see here, let's take a look at our thesis for this episode. Under the pretense of fighting poverty and injustice, the USCCB-run Catholic Campaign for Human Development has disfigured Catholic social teaching to make it nothing more than a tool to help promote sexual immorality and communism. Let's think about that for a minute. We know that there are many people who, for a variety of reasons, suffer from physical want, and the Catholic Church wants us to help those people. But you can't raise the needs of the body to be more important than the needs of the soul. What this means is we're all supposed to help poor people, but our aid has got to spring from the ultimate goal of helping the poor and everyone get to heaven to spend eternity with Christ. The popes and the magisterium have reaffirmed this truth time and time again. Back in 1975, for example, Pope Paul VI had noticed the already growing trend toward a radically perverted understanding of the church's social teaching. So, in his apostolic exhortation, Evangelium Nutiandi, Pope Paul reminds Christians that We must not ignore the fact that many, even generous Christians, are frequently tempted to reduce their mission to the dimensions of a simply temporal project. They would reduce their aims to a man-centered goal. The salvation of which she is the messenger would be reduced to material well-being. Her activity, forgetful of all spiritual and religious preoccupation, would become initiatives of the political or social order. But if this were so, the church would lose her fundamental meaning. The Holy Father is reminding us if you truly love someone, then you want what's absolutely best for that person, which is for them to be with God forever in heaven. This does not mean that you have to force people to convert in order to receive your help, but the help that you offer must be given in the framework of God's divine order 
that he established. Unfortunately, building up Christ's kingdom is exactly what the CCHD has consistently failed to do. But before we get into the CCHD in more depth, let's go over the church's true social teaching, the authentic version of it. We first need to understand how the church wants us, wants us to work for the kingdom of God so that we'll have a better idea of why the CCHD's activities are explicitly anti-Catholic. The Sermon on the Mount is one of the most oft-quoted sources people use to promote the modern distortion of the church's social teaching, and it's a great example of how these people are perverting that teaching. See, the modern social justice crowd likes to use Jesus' sermon as proof that helping the poor is just as important, if not more so, as protecting the unborn, the institution of marriage, etc. The social justice folks argue that because Jesus said, blessed are the poor, that our first duty is to help the poor become, well, unpoor. <coughs> Stop the train right there. Here's the problem. Jesus never said, blessed are the poor, period. What he actually said was, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The church's high esteem for a vowed life of poverty notwithstanding, our blessed Lord is most definitely not saying that because you're poor, you get to go to heaven. What he is saying is that the poor in spirit, the people who are meek and humble, who have an absolute and childlike trust in God their Father, they will get to heaven. Jesus is talking about a spiritual attitude, not a material lack. Now, one excellent source for the real understanding of authentic Catholic social teaching is a book called Citizens of the Heavenly City, a Catechism of Social Teaching by Dr. Arthur Hippler. The book was commissioned by none other than His Eminence Cardinal Raymond Burke, Prefect of the Apostolic Signatura, during his time as Bishop of the Diocese of La Crosse, Wisconsin. He commissioned it precisely because he was so concerned about the runaway false application and understanding of the Church's authentic social teaching. He even wrote the words for the foreword of the book. Originally intended as a high school textbook, it is short, clear, and perfectly orthodox. Dr. Hippler is an instructor at Providence Academy just outside of Minneapolis in Plymouth, Minnesota. He also contributes to the Orthodox Catholic periodical, The Wanderer. That we have lost almost entirely the idea that the social work of the church uh, should be evangelizing. Again, when you, when you read those epistles, when you read the Acts of the Apostles, that was, uh, that was a part of the Christian life which was founded on prayer, which was founded on faith, which was uh, built on a devotional life, on a sacramental life, and uh, fundamentally an otherworldly mission in which uh, what you were doing was bringing the gospel to the nations. And mission, to the extent that there, there's anything religious about it, it tends to be uh, dialogue, but dialogue just conceived as, as exchanging uh, opinions, uh, religious opinions. So, uh, the effect then of having, um, uh, having the social work of the church lose that, that, that distinctive dimension, uh, I would say, of, of, uh, of the apostolic work, of, 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 of its apost apostolicity, um, is that uh, it's entirely remedying people's physical needs and material needs and leaving behind that they have a soul. Uh, John Paul II put it so nicely, people are not just hungry for bread, they are hungry for God. Uh, and that's what, that's what gets left out. So what Dr. Hippler is saying here is that the primary goal of the church is to tend to people's spiritual needs with an eye to their salvation. Catholics must also assist people with physical and material help, but this help cannot be divorced from the ultimate spiritual focus. It's not just community organizing. This goes back to what we'd originally said. If people forget the true meaning and goal of their existence, then whatever physical acts of charity they perform are pretty much worthless. Unfortunately, a lot of people do focus on the purely material aspects of social justice, and there are several reasons for this. One is that some people don't understand the distinction between physical and spiritual needs, but there are others who have a very different impetus for social outreach. One of the things that, that I saw in my, in my work in Justice and Peace um, was people who 
uh, had compromised the church's teaching in some area with regard to sexuality. It could be contraception, it could be abortion, uh, divorce, all, uh, these things that are now so countercultural in the world in which we live, uh, but part of the, the whole uh, effects of, of the sexual revolution. Uh, there, there are Catholics, obviously, who have bought into that, and that affects the way they do the social work of the church, because uh, at that point, uh, what happens is that the social work of the church becomes something that you do to compensate another area where you feel defective or where you perhaps have bad conscience. Dr. Hippler's comments here are very important to understand. He has a very unique insight because for six years he was the director of the Office of Justice and Peace in the Diocese of La Crosse under then Bishop Burke. Although there are many people in the church who honestly believe they are doing good by promoting a false social agenda, there are also many who are engaged in the work of CCHD and other such organizations for rather disingenuous reasons. All this kind of makes sense if you think about it. Our body is an expression of God's love for us, and so the devil is always trying to cause us to sin with our bodies, also known as with our sexual faculties. You'll usually find that where there are problems of chastity, there are problems of obedience. That is a direct quote from Cardinal Burke in a speech he gave in Rome in 2010. This conversation will take on a new meaning now as we move on to look at the CCHD's grantees individually. You'll be shocked at how many of them flagrantly reject church teaching on sexual morality as well as many other issues including communism, and yet they happily hold out their hands while the social justice crowd at the Bishop's National Office pours millions of dollars into them. Now that we've talked about what the church means by the term social teaching, we can look at how the CCHD has perverted that teaching into sexual liberation propaganda and a promotion of a Marxist ideology. First, a little background. The Catholic Campaign for Human Development is overseen by the Department of Justice, Peace, and Human Development within the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. It's one of over 40 departments within this huge Byzantine bureaucracy. The CCHD was started in 1969 with a great deal of behind-the-scenes influence of notorious socialist Saul Alinsky. When you go to the CCHD page on the USCCB website, you are told that the mission is to, quote, address the root causes of poverty in America through promotion and support of community-controlled self-help organizations through transformative education. So what does that even mean? It just sounds like a lot of vague liberal speak, right? What has happened in many, many cases is that work is done with groups who either directly or indirectly promote sexual immorality, murder, and communism. We know for a fact that in the year 2010-2011, at least 14, 14 CCHD grantees, groups getting money from the CCHD, actively and directly promoted things like contraception, gay rights, and socialist goals. Remember now, actively and directly. That's important, directly. Then there are at least another 41 grantees that belong to coalitions, groupings of other so-called social justice outfits that collectively engage in these evil activities, which are categorically opposed to Christ and His Church. These numbers come from the 213-page report from the American Life League released in October of 2011. It's available at the link right over here, and it details the CCHD's grants for the 2010-2011 year. During the summer of 2011, a copy of the report was sent privately to every single bishop in America. When news of this scandal became widespread in 2009, the CCHD set out to supposedly clean up their own house. They failed miserably. Shockingly, the situation is even worse than before. Worse than before the internal house cleaning began, but more on that a little later. What's important to note is, as we said, every bishop in America now has the cold, hard facts in their hands. The American Life League, or all, has spent an enormous amount of time and effort in researching and documenting the many serious failings of the CCHD. Such intense research efforts are necessary because the CCHD is masterful at layering its financial transactions. As we said, not all of those 55 groups we just talked about explicitly promote evil themselves. Fourteen do. 
but much hay is made with these other groups that indirectly do their damage. A setup like this makes it very hard to trace where the CCHD money actually goes because there are miles and miles of virtual money trails. All's report is the latest in a long saga of efforts to get the church leaders in the United States to recognize the inherent problems with the CCHD and convince the organization to defund these sinful groups. Thanks in large part to American Life League's previous attempts to raise awareness of the CCHD, the Bishops' Conference enacted new guidelines for awarding funds to groups. However, as we will presently make clear, the CCHD has only defunded, get this, one group, even though there are at least 55 more grantees that must be defunded. Let's take a quick look now at the new CCHD guidelines for funding groups. Within the USCCB's website, on the CCHD's page, it says, To qualify for CCHD funds, applicant organizations must not promote in any way activities that work against Catholic values. CCHD grants to local anti-poverty efforts are screened, awarded, and monitored in close partnership with local Catholic dioceses. CCHD grants to groups in a local community require the explicit approval of the bishop of that diocese. Well, that's a rather clear statement, don't you think? And it's exactly what's needed to make sure no bad groups are funded. But, and this is a huge but, the CCHD has nearly universally refused to follow its own reform mandate, as we will see now. First, some of the leaders and their advisors, John Carr and John Sweeney. Mr. Carr is the executive director of the USCCB's Department of Justice, Peace, and Human Development, that office, that department, which oversees the office of the CCHD and its annual multi-million dollar collection taken up in parishes nationwide, generally the Sunday before Thanksgiving. You may remember Mr. Carr as the center of a controversy back in 2010. Then, it had come to light that between 1999 and February of 2005, he was on the board of directors of the Center for Community Change, a militantly anti-Catholic organization, as well as secretary for the Department of Social Development for the USCCB during some of the same years. During a speech to the Eisenhower Foundation after the 2004 U.S. presidential election, Carr freely recounted an episode when he sat in on the board, of the board of the CCC and was involved in a campaign strategy discussion of how to attract the homosexual vote to the John Kerry campaign. This flies in the face of later denials by Carr that when he was on the board of the CCC that the group was not involved in trying to advance the homosexual agenda. Again, while Carr was on the board, a woman by the name of Sally Cohn was hired by the CCC as senior campaign strategist specifically, get this, to lay out tactics for securing the gay vote. Cohn came to the CCC with an impressive resume of doing this for other organizations like the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force and the Ford Foundation, a huge supporter of abortion and the homosexual agenda. Carr sat on the board during these campaign strategy sessions and by his own admission gave input into them. He sat on the board while hiring decisions were made specifically based on the CCC's decision to align itself with the pro-gay movement. Now, as the executive director of the USCCB's Department of Justice, Peace and Human Development, he has deflected all criticisms of the CCHD's continuing support for groups that directly or indirectly are funded by the CCHD, which is under his control. Currently, Carr serves on the board of another group called Bread for the World, which actively pursues the United Nations Population Control Program disguised as a poverty reduction program. The UN program is called the Millennium Project and has a list of goals known as the Millennium Development Goals, which in part advance sterilization, abortion, and contraception in third world countries through backdoor channels like government assistance programs for third world political leaders. Bread for the World, of which again Carr is on the board, again actively supports the UN Millennium Project, which has drawn a lot of fire from worldwide pro-life organizations. As of right now, Carr's underling is Ralph McLeod, and he is the man who actually runs the day-to-day -day affairs of the CCHD. 
McLeod was outed earlier this year as having been an active supporter and member of the campaign for pro-abortion Democrat Wendy Davis running for a seat in the Texas State Senate. She defeated a pro-life incumbent. Despite his roles in getting a pro-abortion politician elected, Carr has kept Ralph McLeod on the job at CCHD. And despite Carr's involvement with all these groups, his bosses have kept him on the job. Another person of interest is John Sweeney. He's the president emeritus and former five-term president of the powerful labor union, the AFL-CIO. He's also currently listed as a consultant for the USCCB's Committee on Domestic Justice and Social Development, the department under John Carr's control, which oversees the CCHD. Now, at first, this may not seem all that bad, but the problem is that Mr. Sweeney is a major proponent of homosexual rights and same-sex marriage. Here are just a few examples of his support for the homosexual agenda over the years. In 1983, John Sweeney spoke in favor of a resolution condemning discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. A couple decades later, in a 2001 book entitled, Out at Work, Building a Gay Labor Alliance, John Sweeney wrote an entry titled, The Growing Alliance Between Gay and Union Activists. It's here that Sweeney, president of the AFL-CIO from 1995 to 2009, talks about how he was among the first labor union leaders to include homosexuality in the labor union agenda. Several years after that, in 2005, Sweeney brought a resolution to the executive council of the AFL-CIO to officially stand against the federal marriage amendment in favor of same-sex marriage. And lastly, in 2009, John Sweeney released a statement in full support of the Pro-Homosexual Employee Non-Discrimination Act, also known as ENDA, in direct opposition to the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, even though he was at the USCCB as a consultant at the same time. Wait a minute, this is crazy, right? So a USCCB committee keeps a consultant on board to supposedly help promote Catholicism, but meanwhile, he is actively and explicitly fighting the Catholic Church's teaching tooth and nail? Does that make sense? Sadly, what we've talked about so far barely scratches the surface of the problems with the CCHD. Stick around as we dig deeper into the mammoth transgressions of the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, as we're about to learn much of what the CCHD does promotes fake Catholicism that actually teaches people to be focused on the material things of this world. Now that we've seen what the church's authentic social teaching is, let's take a look at the fake version that has largely overtaken it. Unfortunately, many Catholics today believe that social justice means a variety of issues, eliminating poverty, ending war, fighting climate change, combating racism, stopping abortion, etc. Most unfortunate is the fact that most Catholics believe that all social issues are equally important. While most issues are worthy of attention, not all of them carry the same weight, not by a long shot. The number one issue, as defined by our Holy Father, is the life issue, abortion. Nothing else trumps this. Here is the then Cardinal Ratzinger on the importance of abortion and euthanasia. Not all moral issues have the same moral weight as abortion and euthanasia. For example, if a Catholic were to be at odds with the Holy Father on the application of capital punishment or on the decision to wage war, he would not, for that reason, be considered unworthy to present himself to receive Holy Communion. While the Church exhorts civil authorities to seek peace, not war, and to exercise discretion and mercy in imposing punishment on criminals, it may still be permissible to take up arms to repel an aggressor or to have recourse to capital punishment. There may be a legitimate diversity of opinion even among Catholics about waging war and applying the death penalty but not, however, with regard to abortion and euthanasia. Yet somehow, people have put saving the rainforest and recycling on par with the murder of the most defenseless among us. Okay, so we've established that a flawed version of social justice is currently infecting the greater Catholic world. It's not that difficult to change, right? Can't we just simply ask the clergy to put more emphasis on the true social doctrine of the church? Well, sad to say, some of our priests have bought into this false version as well, either through open agreement or bad formation in seminaries 
where social justice ideologues taught them when they were younger and impressionable. But it's not only many of the priests who accept this version, but also not a small number in the hierarchy who too have been unduly influenced. Earlier we told you about the CCHD's stated policy of not funding any group that promotes in any way activities that work against Catholic values. Well, they even took it a step further. On the USCCB's website, they say, CCHD will not fund groups that are knowingly members of coalitions which have as part of their organizational purpose or coalition agenda positions or actions that contradict fundamental Catholic moral and social teaching. Remember, these are their own guidelines. So let's examine some of the highly questionable CCHD grantees. As we mentioned before, the church's true social teaching tells us to address the spiritual needs first and the temporal ones secondly. It appears that much of the money given out is for temporal needs only. Again, physical needs are obviously very important, but the needs of the soul must come first. Unfortunately, the issues we're about to look at go way beyond merely putting temporal needs as the priority. Some blatantly stand for abortion, homosexuality, and Marxism, while others are members of coalitions that stand for these things, again, in defiance of their own guidelines. All in all, there are 55 problematic groups, which makes up a disgraceful 24% of all the CCHD grantees. Tragically, that number is, believe this or not, actually up, can you believe that, up from 51 in the previous year, after the CCHD underwent a review process to ensure these sorts of problems would stop. This is a classic case of the fox guarding the hen house. In truth, despite all the chest thumping and public relations bandwagon and the accompanying dog and pony show, absolutely nothing has happened at the CCHD as it continues to hand over millions and millions of your collection plate donations to groups fighting against Catholic teaching directly or indirectly, but in either case, in violation of their own stated guidelines. Of the 55 groups, we will touch on 17 of them. For those that purchase a copy of this program, a resource disc is included with a full report on all 55 groups. So, let's take a look, shall we? First, we have a group called New York City AIDS Housing Network, who are known as Vocal New York. This group, which was given $30,000 by the CCHD, and remember folks, these money, these dollar figures, is money that you have put into the plate at this collection. This group was given $30,000 by the CCHD and works to prevent homelessness among the 10,000 low-income New Yorkers living with the disease AIDS. Certainly an admirable cause. However, they also hand out free condoms to the public. What's more, they even participated in a condom conga line at a leftist social justice event called the U.S. Social Forum in June 2010. Is a group that uses Catholic money to promote contraception worthy of being a CCHD grantee? It should be noted the CCHD is supposedly in the process of defunding Vocal New York, but as of the release of this program, it hasn't happened yet. Stay tuned on this one. Another group from the New York area is Restaurant Opportunity Center of New York. For 2010-2011, they received $25,000 of your money from the CCHD to help their plight of winning improved conditions for restaurant workers and raising public recognition of restaurant workers' contributions to the city. The problem here is that they are members of a several pro-abortion, pro-homosexual coalitions like the Center for Community Change, which we'll talk about later, the U.S. Human Rights Network and the New York City Human Rights Initiative. An important point here is to keep in mind this, that when a group joins a coalition, that essentially means that the coalition speaks on behalf of its members. So when a coalition states that they are pro-abortion or pro-homosexuality, they are speaking on behalf of their members as well. So by becoming a coalition member of the U.S. Human Rights Network, the Center for Community Change, and the New York City Human Rights Initiative, the Restaurant Opportunity Center of New York is saying that they stand for everything that the coalition they belong to does. We'll encounter this situation in many of the upcoming groups that we're profiling. A few more things on the Restaurant Opportunity Center of New York before we move on. They were responsible for producing a guidebook which directly promotes homosexuality. Plus, in August 2009, they hosted a focus group entitled LGBTs in the Restaurant Industry to help with their report on gender discrimination. Heading down the East Coast, next we have the United Workers Association of Maryland, or UWA. 
The group is a human rights organization led by low-wage workers who, quote, fight for fair development, which respects human rights, maximizes public benefits, and is sustainable, end quote. They were given $50,000 of your money by the CCHD. Unfortunately, they are also listed on Equality Maryland's website as opposing any ban on same-sex marriage. In addition, they are a member of Progressive Maryland, which actively lobbies for same-sex marriage. Moving now to the Midwest, we have four groups. Let's start with the Michigan Organizing Project, also known as MOP. This group was given $40,000 of your money by the CCHD. Over the course of four years, this group has received multiple grants from a group called the Arcus Foundation, explicitly for the promotion of homosexuality. And these grants are no small potatoes. They add up to over $500,000. They're also an affiliate of two coalitions that are pro-abortion and pro-homosexual, the Center for Community Change and National People's Action. Staying in the state, let's look at Michigan Interfaith Voice, also known as the Gamaliel Michigan. They got $25,000 of your money from the CCHD. They also received money from the Arcus Foundation, $300,000 to be exact. Like Michigan Organizing Project, this money was for the explicit intent of homosexual activism. In one hand, they're taking money from the Catholic Church, and in the other, from groups that use them to push the homosexual agenda. Another Midwestern CCHD grantee is Intercommunity Justice and Peace Center, based in Cincinnati. They received $28,000 of your money from the CCHD for 2010-2011. At one point, their website listed pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, and Marxist groups under, quote, friends and colleagues. Some of those groups included the International Socialist Organization, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, also known as PFLAG, Equality Cincinnati, and Cincinnati National Organization of Women. IJPC's website was recently redesigned and no longer lists these organizations, but this comes after IJPC was caught with these links last year. These links have never been addressed by the CCHD. Staying in the Midwest, our next grantee is from the state of Minnesota. The Harriet Tubman Center helps women, children, and families struggling with relationship violence, substance abuse, and mental health. Clearly good goals. The CCHD gave them $40,000 of your money, which is fine, except for the fact that they are intimately involved with the pro-homosexual, pro-abortion Michigan Summit. How involved? Well, the co-founder and executive director of the Harriet Tubman Center is on the advisory board of the Michigan Summit. One of HTC's employees, Molly Sweeney, served on a panel presentation at the Michigan Summit. The actual summit was sponsored by several pro-abortion, pro-homosexual organizations, including the Arcus Foundation, Michigan National Organization for Women, Planned Parenthood Affiliates of Michigan, and Unity Michigan. Just before the Michigan Summit got underway, they held a kickoff event hosted by the LGBT rights group Equality Michigan at a place called the Spiral Dance Bar, which is, big surprise, a gay bar. Fast forward to the keynote speech at the summit given by Mary Kay Henry, the president of the SEIU. Listen to what she has to say. We have to unite. Immigrants being deported in Nebraska, that's our issue. Voting rights being threatened in Missouri or Benton Harbor, that's our issue. Pensions being cut in Michigan, that's our issue. Medicaid being slashed in New Jersey, that's our issue. The rights of LGBT people being denied in Minnesota, that's our issue. And that's the notion that is core of this summit. We cannot move a Michigan forward until we all decide to stand for each other and with each other. This is not a situation of guilt by association which past defenders of the CCHD have claimed, but guilt by participation. Harriet Tubman Center doesn't just have a loose affiliation with the Michigan Summit. They share people, resources, and agendas, and participate in their annual event. Remember, the CCHD claims that no group is given money from the national office without the express consent of the local ordinary. Is that really true? The local bishop knows all about these things? Then one has to ask the question, is it possible that the bishops or their staffs knowingly supporting this filth? Do they really see and read everything? It's important that the lay faithful know where their money's going. 
Um, I used to be a, a, a Catholic Campaign for Human Development local director in, in my, uh, my diocesan position. Uh, I used to be on the board for Catholic Charities. I used to be the director for Catholic Relief Services. As a director, I'm responsible to the lay faithful for where the money's going. So if there are places where money is going where maybe a, a, a significant amount of the people who are contributing feel uncomfortable or, or have, have, some, ha, have some moral, uh, moral questions, uh, legitimate moral questions raised, uh, that, that's something as a director I have, to, I have to welcome and I have to respond to. Now we move to a group on the West Coast. They're called Coalition LA, or COLA. The CCHD gave them $40,000 of your money. They are a group that helps empower low-income residents of Los Angeles. However, in March 2011, they tried to empower a different group, producing a voter guide in favor of same-sex marriage. It's also a member of groups that support abortion and homosexuality, like Mobilize the Immigrant Vote, California Partnership, and they're also partners with the Center for Community Change, CCC. No big surprise there. We'll take a closer look at the last group in that list a bit later. From LA, we head over to Houston and the group Houston Interfaith Worker Justice. The CCHD gave this group $25,000. Never forget, it's your money. Houston Interfaith is a coalition member of the progressive group Houston United. Earlier this year, Houston United promoted the Texas Day of Outrage which supported, among other things, the LGBT lifestyle. Houston Interfaith Worker Justice was present at the rally. Sylvia Garcia, a county commissioner, was a major speaker at the Texas Day of Outrage. Sylvia brought up many issues during her speech, but this one stood out. And that sonogram bill. Boo! You saw that. That gentleman attacked that man. I hope he doesn't attack me, because quite frankly, the sonogram bill was an attack on all women of Texas. Of course, she's referring to the bill that Texas Governor Rick Perry signed into law that required women to undergo an ultrasound, hear a detailed description of the baby, and then wait a full 24 hours before being able to receive an abortion. At the same rally, a different speaker had this to say about the sonogram bill. Because, you know, according to Dan Patrick, you broads are just too stupid to know what an abortion is. That's what Dan Patrick thinks about you. You want to have a religious fundamentalist explaining science to you? No, it's time to get outraged, brothers and sisters. So why is a group that's receiving Catholic money affiliated with this? In addition, Houston United also underwrote a training program for homosexual activism. They posted a pro-abort, pro-homosexual article on the 2011 Texas legislative session. Again, the question, does the Cardinal Archbishop of Houston know about all this stuff? According to the CCHD office at the Bishop's National Headquarters, he does. Because remember, they say, they claim, that nothing happens and no money is given whatsoever without the local bishop's knowledge and approval. Then we have DASIS Rising Up and Moving, also known as DRUM. They received $35,000 from the CCHD. DRUM was founded in 2000 to build the power of South Asian low-wage immigrant workers, youth, and families in New York City to win economic and educational justice and civil and immigrant rights. Problem is, they support other rights too, like homosexual rights. They belong to the National Network for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, which stands up for homosexual rights. But that's not the end of it. They were also a participant in a conference whose stated goal was to unite, quote, reproductive justice and homosexual rights with immigrant rights. They also promoted a transgender day of remembrance. Next, there's the Women's Community Revitalization Project, or WCRP. They are committed to social and economic justice for low-income women and their families. They say that they develop housing and neighborhood facilities, provide supportive services, that they advocate for policy change and honor leadership, dignity, and equity in our communities. They have received $40,000 of your money from the CCHD. WCRP is a member of a pro-abortion coalition called Women's Way. They received a grant from an organization which grants money only to pro-abortion groups and was an associate member agency of that granting group. 
Next on the list is Chicago's Southwest Organizing Project, also known as SWAP. The CCHD gave them $45,000 of your money to help their mission. That mission is to build a broad-based organization of churches, mosques, schools, and other institutions in Southwest Chicago, which will enable families to exercise common values, determine their own futures, and connect with each other to improve life in their neighborhoods. Unfortunately, they are also the lead agency for a sex education program that promotes contraception. That program is called Elevate. In addition, Access Community Health Network is partnered with SWAP in the implementation of a health center at Marquette. Access provides family planning services at all of its health centers. Specifically, their website states, quote, Access Community Health Network acknowledges a woman's right to choose among the full spectrum of reproductive options, end quote. Again, does the Cardinal Archbishop of Chicago know about all this? The lay staff at the CCHD assure us he does because no group is funded in his diocese, as they say, without his consent. Former Chicago CCHD director Ray Flores, who had taken note of these problems, attempted to defund SWAP. After some ugly internal exchanges between some liberal Chicago clergy and the Chancery and Flores, Flores' recommendations were turned down by the national office of the CCHD, John Carr and Ralph McLeod. A few weeks later, Flores was unceremoniously dumped. They even got 250 people to attend the U.S. Social Forum, a bad event we'll talk about a little later. After them, we have Alternatives for Community and Environment. The Catholic Campaign for Human Development gave them $25,000. Again, your money. Remember, this is all your money. ACE promotes same-sex marriage on its website and is a dues-paying member of a community organizing co-op that grants money to pro-abortion, pro-homosexuality organizations. Next, we have a group called National People's Action Network. They signed an open letter to President Obama and some members of Congress urging them to continue funding Planned Parenthood during the budget debates. While National People's Action Network is not a CCHD grantee, it is an organization that nine CCHD grantees are members of. Remember, this is not a case of guilt by association. When a grantee is a member of a coalition, it essentially says that the coalition is speaking on behalf of its members. Next up is the California Partnership. They endorsed Senator Barbara Boxer's work to defeat House Resolution 3 and created a voter guide in 2008 advising voters to oppose legal restrictions on abortion and to oppose a ban on same-sex marriage. This is another situation where the group isn't a grantee of the CCHD, but three California Partnership members are grantees. There's also a group called California Latinas for Reproductive Justice meaning abortion, that's listed as an ally on California Latina's webpage. What did they do that's so bad? Well, the California Partnership signed on to a 16th of February 2011 letter to House Speaker John Boehner in support of federal funding for Planned Parenthood. Up next is the Center for Community Change. 27, get this, 27 groups, 27 CCHD grantees are members of this group that signed an open letter to President Obama and some members of Congress urging them to continue funding Planned Parenthood. They are also actively involved in the promotion of homosexuality and they equate abortion rights with criminal justice. And they accept donations for the promotion of these moral evils. For instance, the Center for Community Change, again remember that's the CCC, received a $75,000 grant in 2007 from the Arcus Foundation specifically for homosexual activism. Here's yet another group called U.S. Human Rights Network. Three CCHD grantees are members of this group that called for the defeat of House Resolution 1, specifically because it cuts funding to family planning programs. It also provides pro-abortion resources and issued its own report, which cites obstacles to, quote, women's access to safe and legal abortions, end quote. It's interesting to note that the U.S. Human Rights Network is on the National Planning Committee of the U.S. Social Forum, which is an annual gathering with an agenda that is pro-abortion, pro-homosexuality, and pro-Marxist. We'll talk more about them a little later on in the show. Then there's the group Jobs with Justice. They're a national network of local coalitions that bring together labor unions, faith groups, community organizations, and student activists to fight for working people, they claim. 
While Jobs with Justice isn't a CCHD grantee, 14 groups that are grantees are members of this group, which actively promotes abortion, homosexual rights, and Marxism. Here's a sampling of some causes they've promoted. At Jobs with Justice's 2005 National Conference, it hosted a workshop titled Organize Out, The Movement, LGBT Issues, and You. At Jobs with Justice's 2008 National Conference, it hosted a workshop titled Litigation, Legislation, and Activism for LGBT Workers' Rights. In 2009, Jobs with Justice joined Planned Parenthood and now to call on CVS to stop locking up condoms. In 2010, Massachusetts Jobs with Justice invited members to attend a Gay and Lesbian Labor Activist Network meeting. In 2011, Massachusetts Jobs with Justice posted a job advertisement for the National Network of Abortion Funds. One of the job responsibilities for that job includes providing referral information for women in need of an abortion. Cleveland Jobs with Justice participated in the Feminist Majority Foundation's Global Women's and Human Rights Conference. The conference ran workshops which advocate for abortion and birth control as rights. They've also shared personnel with other dubious groups. Jobs with Justice Workers' Rights Boards includes Kim Gandy, president of the National Organization for Women, also known as NOW. James Thindwa, the former executive director for Chicago Jobs with Justice, was a speaker at Socialism 2010. The current director of Chicago Jobs with Justice was a keynote speaker at the 23rd annual People's World Banquet, which enjoys, quote, a special relationship with the Communist Party, USA. Next up is the U.S. Social Forum. 16 CCH grantees attended this four-day event, which hosted dozens of workshops promoting abortion, homosexuality, and Marxism. All organizations registered to participate in the U.S. Social Forum were required to pay a registration fee, which means that all CCHD grantees that attended the U.S. Social Forum directly funded the program. Here's a video from their 2007 conference highlighting one of the many progressive issues they focus on. We have a long history of having our sexuality controlled by the state, our communities, our families, and our partners. Another world is possible. We can be, and we must be, the trailblazers for the movement. It is our duty to fight. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and protect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. So we've talked about how your donation to the CCHD is being used to support groups who choose to belong to organizations that stand for things absolutely contrary to church teaching. Next, we'd like to show you what you can do to make a difference in this situation. Now that we've heard just where some of your CCHD money is going, it's time for a concrete, faithful Catholic response. The Catholic response to social justice is simple. We must be faithful to the social teachings of the church. Simple enough, right? Well, to be faithful to the social teachings of the church means we must act. To act is at the root of our faith. Jesus judges us on our actions. The Gospel of Matthew explicitly states this. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. Our blessed Lord takes action on the part of the disciple seriously. Our place in eternity is contingent on how we treat others. The church, then, is correct in demanding the faithful to act on behalf of those who cannot act. 
The church's aim in any moral or faith matter is ordered to help us achieve our highest happiness and avoid the fires of hell. For a Catholic, action takes two forms, the practical dimension and the spiritual dimension. Let's look at what action means in the practical dimension and the spiritual dimension. The practical dimension entails being wise with your temporal assets. A Catholic should never knowingly give money away to organizations that support evil when there are other alternatives. The spiritual dimension entails beseeching our blessed Lord for assistance. We cannot change minds and hearts. That is the job of the Holy Spirit. What we can do is remove barriers to conversion, and that is what we must do. So let's first look at the practical dimension. The practical dimension of action is incredibly important. When we think about practical matters, we're talking about putting your convictions, namely your Catholicism, into concrete action. To do this, there are a few considerations to keep in mind when trying to act practically. The first and most effective way is to avoid giving to the CCHD. The CCHD is giving money to groups that are verifiably against church teaching. If the bishops refuse to eradicate these organizations, you have the power to do it yourself or at least withhold your support. By refusing to give your hard-earned money, you send a message to the bishops and their staff that you do not support these, at best, questionable organizations. Money talks. It's all important to recognize the inherent contradiction in giving money to organizations that oppose church teaching. If the Catholic Church is really and truly committed to opposing homosexuality, abortion, contraception, socialism, and so on, why are they giving money to organizations that support these natural evils? Something is seriously amiss about this situation. We're never going to win, win the war on these intrinsic evils if people in the Catholic Church continue funding organizations that support them. The second is to give this program to your pastor, to your parish, to your bishop with the resource CD. Actually give it to every Catholic you know. This program, this CIA, will show them the problems endemic and systemic at the CCHD and why they should not be giving money to the CCHD or any like organization that supports groups that are against the church. The more people know about the CCHD and their funding preferences, the less money that will be going directly into these organizations that support evil. Remember, again, it's your money that they collect and then hand out. The two previous suggestions are what everyone should be able to do. It does not take much time to talk with your pastor or bishop about the problems of CCHD. As a Catholic, it is your duty to fight for the truth because souls are at stake. Now let's look at the spiritual dimension. There are a few considerations to keep in mind when trying to act spiritually in terms of social justice and social teaching. By spiritual we mean pleading with our blessed Lord to change the hearts and minds of those in power or influence. Jesus alone has the power to change people. The saints are a testament to this and perhaps your life can be a testament to that fact as well. It's important to remember that we need to strive for personal holiness before we go out and ask other people to strive for personal holiness, although we all need encouragement. In reality, we can only change ourselves. Personal holiness entails fasting, praying, confession, faithful reception of Holy Communion, and learning about Catholicism. We must immerse our lives in the pursuit of perfection. If we're ever to make it to heaven, this needs to be our sole aim in accordance with our state in life. There's plenty of material out there, including our own, in which you can learn about the faith, the genuine Catholic faith. We come into this world with a basic intrinsic understanding of what is right and wrong, but to a large extent, we need to continue developing that on our own initiative. With the practical and spiritual considerations in mind, we need to ask the tough questions. There is a mountain of overwhelming evidence that the CCHD and the bishop's staffs have direct knowledge of the wrongdoing and yet they do nothing to stop the funding to organizations that support abortion, homosexuality, contraception, global warming, communism, socialism, and so on. And this is an outrage on the highest level. There's something seriously wrong with the CCHD. Every faithful Catholic has to ask himself or herself a series of important questions, questions upon which may hinge their eternal salvation. First, what are we to believe about where all this is going? In other words, is the CCHD trying to set up a rival magisterium? This is a serious charge, but it's a necessary question based on all the history. 
Second, are the bishops and priests participating in the denial of church teaching, or at least the deliberate blurring of it? In other words, are some of the CCHD staff or bishops or priests deliberately attempting to undermine and obscure church teaching? If so, why? This question, too, needs to be asked, again, based on this repetitive history over and over. Third, are we witnessing a material schism in which a rival magisterium is operating in the church, pushing its own agenda, paying lip service to Rome when caught, and then simply reverting back to its old ways once the spotlight has dimmed? It's unclear at this time what the real motive is, but it is clear that something is deeply wrong at the CCHD. This cannot be denied. And it does no good for church leaders to throw out uncharitable and spurious accusations about the people who bring these evils to light. Killing the messenger does not solve the problem of malfeasance and deceit that has guided this organization for decades now. Once these questions have been asked, it's important for faithful Catholics to respectfully demand answers, answers that demonstrate belief in Catholic teaching, and they want those answers from the CCHD and their bishops. If they cannot, there should be no question as to the removal of personal funding from the CCHD. Might we suggest that you instead spend your money on getting a copy of Dr. Hippler's book, remember endorsed by Cardinal Raymond Burke himself, Citizens of the Heavenly City, available on Amazon. Why not learn about the authentic social teachings of the church and stop funding this facade that has so far funded dozens and dozens and dozens of groups working to overthrow the church's teaching. And now some updates. After the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops defunded one of the CCHD grantees known as Centro Capesino, the total number of the grantees in question is now 54, not 55 as we had originally said. Secondly, we have some additional information and a clarification regarding information gleaned from American Life League's report. Of the groups mentioned in this presentation, three had been discovered after the American Life League report was given to the bishops. They are the Harriet Tubman Center, the Houston Interfaith Worker Justice Center, and Alternatives for Community and Environment. Those three are not in the report that was given to the bishops. Also, since recording this program, some important details regarding the response of the USCCB have come to light. Apparently, the New York AIDS Housing Network, also known as Vocal NYC, has recently had their funding cut off by the CCHD. According to the Bishops' Conference, the group had lied about following Catholic Church teaching against contraception. They actually distribute condoms to the general public and are even listed on a government condom distribution website. This all came about after the watchdog group called Reform CCHD Now Coalition listed the NYC AIDS Housing Network as one of the 54 grantees that goes against church teaching. A worker there confirmed that, yes, they do indeed hand out condoms. While this defunding is good news, it raises serious and disturbing questions about the CCHD's vetting process. Now, according to Michael Hitchborn from the American Life League, they had met with the CCHD officials on four separate occasions in the past year to go over all of this evidence that made it into the report. Hitchborn said, quote, when we asked CCHD why they will be defunding only one group, the Centro Campesino, for distributing condoms, they, the CCHD, said that they thoroughly vetted each individual grantee by calling the local archdiocese and the grantees, end quote. Yet, Hitchborn noted that a press release from 2004, that's important, a press release from 2004 says that the New York AIDS Housing Network had organized a protest supporting the distribution of condoms in prisons, not to mention their condom conga line, which we noted earlier in our program. These two instances would be discovered rather easily with a quick search on the internet. Now, the CCHD responded to these points by saying that the group only received funding for one year, which was approved by the local bishop. They wrote, quote, the information regarding the grantee and condoms was not known. Important here, they are saying that during this vetting process, this information was not known to the CCHD staff 
during the grant approval process or while it was being funded. They continued, had this information been available during the grant period, the charges would have been reviewed and the grant likely canceled, end quote. Well, that all sounds very fine and good, but the problem is the information was available and easily accessed, which underscores the continuing, never-ending problem at the CCHD that despite the claims that they have renewed and revitalized themselves, they obviously don't follow their own new guidelines. Either that or the degree of incompetence and mismanagement beggars belief and should cause every Catholic who will be soon asked to donate money to seriously consider if they can, in good conscience, continue to assist the culture of death, all in the name of social justice. So, now you know. Thanks for watching this edition of CIA, Catholic Investigative Agency. I'm Michael Voris. Let's hit the streets.